from the crisis. Uh, the dynamics was already there, uh, but of course with all the chaos in Bongo, which embedded very much on trade, this confirmed this trend that Poyacosan trade more with Gombe than with Bongo. Because of course the big outlets for agricultural production is whether towards Kano or towards southern Nigeria, not so much toward uh, my degree. Uh, and of course, now the road BU, even today, uh, with uh, Damboa on my degree is closed because of the insurgency. It's very difficult to pass. Sometimes you pass, sometimes you don't. So now to go safely from my degree to Poyakusar, you have to go to Yombe or to Bombay. Uh, uh, so it's a long detour. Uh, so clearly, uh, the possibility of Poyakusar trader to link that to my degree is much more complicated. So the, they trade more and more towards Gombe, and that could be also uh, an explanation. Topography, the hills, there's only one road crossing Guayacosan, there's no really possibility of escape, it's not the savanna, it's very hilly, so it's more difficult uh, to indeed uh, escape from this very uh, road. And also the fact that you have no strategic interest um, in Guayacosan. Nobody, I'm sure, didn't know anything about Guayacosan before entering this room. Uh, if, it, if everyone uh, knew before, uh, then please raise your hand if you must happy to know what you knew about Koyakosar before uh, coming here. Uh, and also an important point that was raised was that there was no CGTF and no military presence. So no reason for Boko Haram to attack the community. Uh, unlike BU, BU is, so again this is a plateau, it's a quite different um, environment compared to uh, northern uh, border. And in BU there were numerous attacks. BU was not at all spared. There were the CGTF, the military. Actually, even as soon as 2009, some uh, members of Boko Haram with Mohamed Yusuf fought with him. And one of the first IED ever traced was in 2009, in July 2009, during the first big uprising of Boko Haram, with somebody from BU trying to manipulate explosives and actually killed himself. Maybe he was the first ever recorded suicide attacker in Algeria. I don't know. Maybe there were uh, records before it and we don't even know. Uh, but in any case, yes, there was a presence of uh, BU local government people in Boko Haram as soon as 2009. Uh, and the fact that you had the military there, of course, explains <coughs> that BU was not spared by the government. To conclude, um, as you can see, oh yes, I wanted, I don't know if I have time to do so, just to show very quickly some, uh, oh, I should have shown you this before, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> just very quickly, these two maps. Um, this one shows, so this is the violence related to Boko Haram only. The other maps was all sorts of violence in the northeast, because northeast is not affected only by Boko Haram conflict. But this one is only the Boko Haram violence. And, and as you see, in, uh, southern Bongo has been very much uh, affected. This is Kwai um, Kusar and bio local government. Uh, bio local government was also spared by the violence of Boko Haram, but they other deadly incidents. Uh, and as you can see, when it comes to the number of primary and secondary schools, and when it's related also to the number of people, um, no, it's not a place where you have so much uh, better access to education as compared to other local governments. But of course, the number of schools don't tell you much in Nigeria, and I'm sure you know about the uh, fairy tales of statistics in Nigeria. Uh, so, and we use Subek statistics. So you have many schools, but they exist only on paper, uh, or they are just ghost schools, even before the conflict. Uh, this is not the only reason for the poor state of education in Bono. Uh, so we decided to see also, to correlate this with the number of teachers. Uh, and it's quite the same. There's no um, um, indicator showing <coughs> that quite um, uh, people had a better access to education than others, uh, which gives, uh, gives room for thinking about the role of uh, access to education as a way to prevent uh, 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 radicalization. So, to hand, because uh, my time is finished, thanks. Uh, multiple factors, as you can see, can explain why, uh, or at least 
the reasons that were uh, was given by 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 the residents why why Kosar was uh, spared from the conflict. But there's no pattern. Uh, there's no model for resilience and peacekeeping. I know it's a bit disappointing for a development agency and humanitarian organization. Um, I don't think that this is replicable elsewhere. Uh, for instance, if you look at Yobe, there's a local government called Machina here, uh, and it was also spared by the conflict. Um, and the uh, social and cultural environment is completely different uh, from Guayacosar. So I don't think that Guayacosar gives us the recipe for what we should do uh, to help reconstruct Bono or the model for peacekeeping. There are multiple factors, uh, and this is maybe the um, main lesson that can be learned. There's a necessity to refine the grain, clearly, and to have a deeper understanding of the situation in Bono and in rural Bono. Uh, this is so important. Thank you so much for your uh, patience and bearing with my uh, French accent. Uh, I think that was an excellent one. Please bring me again to the <coughs> listener. Thank you so much. But I know a lot of us have written out a lot of um, 